Hey, how's it going, people? Welcome to my stream today. <laughs> um, welcome to Draw Drawing with Dinosaur Comics. Today, I have a special guest, the Paint Paddock, aka Charles Nye. Um, say hi, Charles. Hi, guys. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you want to introduce yourself? Give yourself a brief, brief intro? Yeah, so my, my name is Charles. I go by the Paint Paddock and major social media for my paleo art. But the paleo art stuff is a side gig <laughs> during my day life, my everyday life. Hmm. I am a marine biologist. I'm currently a master's student at Oregon State University, and I study cetacean genomics. So whale and dolphin DNA is my primary research right now. Cool. It's like, yeah. <laughs> not paleontology? I know, right? Like, uh, how? Why? What? Oh, why? <laughs> Betrayal. <laughs> yeah, so I've, I've actually Keeps known... things fresh. <laughs> I've actually known Charles for a while now. And uh, we've actually been thinking about doing a podcast for a while, and now he's a guest on, on mine. I don't know if he'll be like a recurring guest. You, you know, you probably will be. <laughs> but um, yeah, what, what are we doing today, Charles? Uh, today, well, Andy, you asked me to come on today. We're going to do some Morrison dinosaurs. I already got a little bit of a sketch going on my uh, end over here. I'm doing a Diplodocus because it's been a very long time since I last done one of these long boys over here. Mm -hmm. So we're doing dinosaurs for the, Mor the Morrison Formation, one of the most... <laughs> widely renowned and known uh formations that has jurassic dinosaurs late jurassic dinosaurs all the big players you i mean brachiosaurus allosaurus i'd say it's definitely the richest all things formation matters. one of the richest formations it is definitely one of the best i'm not i'm not biased because brachiosaurus is my favorite dinosaur not at all but you know gallium opus <laughs> i know it's another sauropod <laughs> he didn't mention gallium opus or whatever he didn't mention you didn't mention dryosaurus Oh yeah, I mean, I love, I love dryosaurs. Honest to God, dryosaurs are my favorite dinosaurs. But yeah, you got uh, all the good ones here. No, it's, all it's... the best ones are here. <laughs> so okay, let's let's start with like your your origin story, dude. Like, how did you get into into paleontology? So in my general? mom and dad were on a planet that started to dissolve and break apart because the core is unstable, and so they shipped me out. <laughs> so your name, your real name is Charles. <laughs> His real name is actually Charles L. Charles L. <laughs> Charles L. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Hill, you no, will be their no, savior. So, uh, <laughs> real talk, though. But, uh, so I did my undergrad at Cal State Monterey Bay mm. as a marine science major. So I went there in 2015 and finished in 2018. And I'm, a, I'm one of those weird people who uh, kind of knew what they wanted to do from the very get-go mm -hmm. and, and did it. Because I feel like a lot of people want to be certain things when they grow up. You know, they want to be firefighters or cops or, you know, ambulance workers or physicists but they end up doing something else which is fine but uh you don't really meet people who stick with something for so long and uh that's kind of my story from marine bio i always loved the ocean mm -hmm. um and i always loved dinosaurs but i felt like the the ocean was calling for me so I'm more of a uh <laughs> we were voyagers <laughs> we were voyagers <laughs> joe yeah, fyi like i know you can't see charles face but me and him are both uh filipinos so we're of austronesian origin and yeah a lot of them were pretty much voyagers <laughs> we're island people it's, it's a call back home yeah <laughs> yeah oh that's that's awesome so you anyway you were saying uh but yeah so so that's just kind of uh how i got into marine bio uh the whole genetic stuff uh, kind of came out of nowhere i got lucky and got myself a good internship in uh undergrad and that really got me invested in uh something called conservation genetics and so that's using Genetics is a way to inform how to best protect species, mm -hmm. um, and that can one thing led to another. I worked at the Monterey Bay Aquarium for a little while, and then the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, known um, AKA Imbari, mm -hmm. for uh, almost two years, and then I started grad school because I decided I wanted to get my hands dirty and make some novel research happen. Mm -hmm. And here we are. <laughs> that, so I'm not gonna lie; I never told you this. My original uh, goal was to become a marine biologist and study whales when I went to college. <laughs> I forgot how I went into psychology, which is my um, my main, or well, my only degree. <laughs> yes, I have a degree yeah, in psychology, I guys. I thought you were a psych major. I, I didn't thought, know that. I thought I, you were a stats major. I mean, I was psych major with a focus in statistics because I was in the research oh. labs and stuff. Um, mm, okay, okay. But yeah, my dream was to become a marine biologist, live in Hawaii, and study whales, which is basically what you, you might end up doing anyway. <laughs> Well, I'm not in Hawaii. I go to Oregon, so it's like opposite. It's inverse Hawaii. It's always cold, 
Uh-huh. Um, it's still gorgeous, but it, it's it's not Hawaii. <laughs> I miss Hawaii. <laughs> you get there. All right. So but yeah, so cool stuff. Yeah. So what what are we drawing today? Besides, like, uh, what are you specifically gonna start with? I'm gonna start with Allosaurus because Allosaurus I think is the hardest um, theropod for me to draw, just because of how weird its face is. It's it's both standard and weird at the same time, and I'm exactly. doing a, a Diplodocus and uh, some Ramphorhynchus around it. Um, oh. So yeah, doing some some sauropods, the milk and I said milk and butter. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> milk and butter, the same. <laughs> My milk and butter, same. yeah, yes. Yeah. So, you know the phrase. <laughs> okay, wait. But, yeah. I for I forgot if I if we finish this conversation, we're going really fast. Um, so what was your origin story before you went to the, the freaking Superman origin story? <laughs> Your dinosaur origin story. My dinosaur origin story is uh, pretty similar to my marine biology origin story because um, I liked both for for so long, yeah. right? Um, I don't remember a time when I didn't know dinosaurs. That's the thing. It, it's super hard for me to pinpoint what was the catalyst. Was it Jurassic Park? Was it Land Before Time? Was it, I don't know, a dinosaur toy from the supermarket? I, I, I don't know when it started or how, but mm -hmm. it's been a constant for all my life and, and now i kind of indulge in it as like my like uh, secondary scientific interest a lot of scientists will be casually you know or like non-professionally interested in another kind of science because it keeps them sane you know <laughs> you're not thinking about work 24 7 but you're still in that headspace and i think paleontology is that uh, me flipping a switch for a different part of my brain because this is all artistic yeah right so it's my, my artistic Definitely. medium is paleontology right so uh yeah it's me engaging in in science and scientific literature and all that and stuff uh, in, in a different way that's not pressing down on my like work time that makes any sense i try to separate my work and my casual stuff as much as i can mm -hmm. yeah that makes so sense that's my dinosaur origin story yeah, I don't like thinking about numbers when I when I'm not at work. <laughs> I, I'm, I was just I'm just like um, what do you call this? Like I enjoy like stats on a very like basic level when I find out information that's relevant to me. But if it's like homework or anything, oh, this is so tiring. I don't want like I don't want to bring my work home. You know what I mean? And yeah, I, home I, work. <laughs> and I do enjoy my my job doing math all day mm. and like doing spreadsheets and stuff but at the same time like mm. i don't want to do that all day it's like very like i don't say i don't want to say mind numbing but yeah it, it's it's pretty it's pretty mind numbing <laughs> mind numbing work and it's just i think art is very freeing yeah um, i used to work in an office for a little while um my first job in undergrad you know like minimum wage job yeah was uh i was at cal state monterey bay and they hired me to work in the admissions department it was an office cubicle job and that honestly really prepared me well for data management and curation and all that. But yeah, I know what you mean. Like, cause you sit down, you have a set of tasks you have to get done for the day, right? Yeah. And you get into the groove, but then you know, if if you do that's the same thing, I think regardless of what your tasks are, but like especially in an office or number spreadsheet mm -hmm. setting, it, it gets numbing. You you just kind of blink and it's five o'clock and clock out, time to go home. I clock out, do um, your hobbies at home, and then cook dinner. Yeah. Cook dinner, get yeah. what you need to get done, and and then rinse and repeat the next day. Which is, you know, not it's not always like that, but when it does get like that, you can definitely feel it. And I, yeah, so I understand 100% where you're coming from mm -hmm. with that. So yeah, I feel it. Do you enjoy what you do now? I have. Um, uh, I love what I do now. Yeah. Like, what is your research focus right now? Yeah. So um, uh, back when I worked at Mbari, I got uh, caught up in a lab that did a lot of environmental DNA. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if, for the uninitiated, uh, environmental DNA or eDNA is when you uh, take a sample from any given environment. So in my case, the ocean, a water sample. And uh, there's bits and pieces of cells and other organic material in that water sample from the things that live inside of it. Mm -hmm. So if you take a sample from a coral reef, right, the water from a coral reef, you'll get DNA from the corals, from the fish that live around it, from the humans that swim around it and all that other fun stuff. And from that, you can get biodiversity mm. without ever having to see a fish or a shark or a person. Mm. Um, and so I got wrapped up in that kind of research. And I found that to be very compelling because you don't need to, yeah, you don't have to interact or disturb 
the environment to take a sample. I don't have to go down there and like take a skin tag from a shark to get its DNA, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I got wrapped up in that, and then the lab I'm part of in Oregon State um, liked the work I was doing, and they uh, brought me on to do some uh, environmental DNA to detect whales, as well as doing something uh, called meta barcoding, which you, you take a, a sample of something and then you find all the different mm -hmm. sequence, uh, the unique DNA sequences inside of that. Right, so that's what that's meta barcoding. But to do that with <laughs> whale poop, <laughs> so you take a whale poop. Okay, how do you? Okay, uh, first of all, how do you find whale uh, whale dookie? <laughs> like, like do you just is just floating? Like, like a like you know so, when you so take whales, a dump in the toilet bowl. Whales defecate. Whales defecate at more often than not at the surface. Really? So if you're following a whale, you, you take its you know you take a net and go grab it. The benefit of that, as gross as that sounds, is that you can get. Per, you can get species level like resolution for what the whale is eating mm -hmm. without needing to catch the whale and cut it open or wait for it to die and cut it open and you can do this multiple times over a whale's lifespan like weeks months years right mm -hmm. and see how that diet changes on an individual level which is really really neat and really really new for a lot of people so uh, that's where my research is currently focusing right now and uh yeah it's, 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 a, it's a cool time it's a uh, a lot of bioinformatics, a lot of sitting in front of the computer, which lends itself well to the pandemic, you know. That's, I'm glad that's, I got a really data-heavy project, right? I was going to say, that's such a weird, like, I don't know, like, thing. It's just like, all right, here's the... <laughs> let's, cat, let's, let's chase his whale until he takes a dump. You know, any second and now... And take, take the net. <laughs> any second now, he's going to go, man. He's going to go take that dump and, you know, <laughs> take the net. Ooh. How big okay, how, get the net? How big, how big are whale dumps? I need to know. Uh, well, it's mostly liquidous, so it covers a rather large volume. You know, you only really need a little bit of it, like a maybe a, a liter, to get appreciable DNA yield, right? So you don't need that much of it because it's just so <laughs> so potent. <laughs> I didn't know. It was, I didn't know it was that liquid. Well, yeah, when when a whale swallows, right, in the ocean, when it grabs a bunch of food, it's mostly water. Mm. I mean, like. What I eat, I mean, I drink a lot of water too. I guess not as much as a whale, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, they are submerged in water like twenty four seven. So I guess, I guess, twenty four seven. Yeah, I guess that makes more sense than. It's a little different for them, but yeah. So that's how you get whale poop, and that's how you. Uh, and then some poor sucker has to get that with the net and bring it to the lab and extract that DNA and process all that, and eventually you sequence it and bingo, you got your. Got your thousands and thousands of dna sequences to parse through for information and then you clone it right and then you clone it yeah, yeah. you put it in a bar <laughs> <call laughs> <it. laughs> okay so theoretically are you saying okay, okay. are you saying that we could we could clone dinosaurs with whale poop uh, yes 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 uh, you heard it here first folks you can i mean i would whale poop with coprolites i don't know yeah yeah, yeah, yeah with coprolites yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think we have some paleontologists watching the chat right now who totally aren't rubbing their temples in frustration about what i'm saying yeah we could totally <laughs> sequence you're here folks uh, dna listen time magazine you know charles and i has if got if you're out there he's got the scoop he's got the scoop call on, me yeah call him you call me uh, i know we've talked before and you've ignored my inquiries and emails but i'm willing to put that aside for the greater good of journalism mm -hmm. you know uh, so please uh let me know Love you. <laughs> All right. What? So, yeah, that, that's that's how you do thing. That's how you do the thing. So, what do you do with the the whale DNA once you've collected it? Like, what are you so analyzing? So yeah, you're you're analyzing for all the it's it's like the eDNA. What I told you, right? Like the environment from the water, but instead mm -hmm. the environment is the poop. Mm -hmm. So, a quote environment. So you sequence, or you, well, you extract it, you purify all the DNA in it, and then you um, amplify it. And then once you do all that fun stuff, you get to sequence it and you get all the genetic bits left behind from all the animals that the whale ate. So it's, uh, you get mostly bacteria and mostly whale DNA because it's from the whale, right? So you, you'll get mostly that. I mean, that makes sense. Um, makes a lot of sense, right? But um, what you don't get that's whale or bacteria is with confidence what it ate, mm -hmm. which is very potent information again like if a whale changes its diet right within a few months you get to see that 
if you sample the same whale multiple times then you can ask well why is it changing its diet is it the seasons changing is it because we're fishing out too many you know of this kind of fish mm -hmm. or something you know so you get to ask those kinds of questions now without having to kill the thing right like mm -hmm. and of course no one wants to kill a whale <laughs> no one kills whales for science really these days so this is a great non-invasive way to get ecology mm -hmm. data for this stuff and that's it's a, super important because whales are of course everyone loves whales mm -hmm. we all know they're important for the environment and you know important for our, our souls <laughs> because we all appreciate uh, them so it, it's it's nice to get that information are, in are whales still actively that. hunted like now? um in some countries in some countries they are um Yes, there, there was a commercial market. And remember, in Japan, we opened their commercial market mm -hmm. recently. Um, and uh, I know some of the Nordic countries up north, you know, uh, Iceland and et cetera, do heavy hunts. Some native uh, peoples will still hunt whales for sustenance hunting. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, um, but aren't oh, they uh, like... Mateo's in chat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mateo. <laughs> I'm going to say, but aren't they like inedible be due to the levels of mercury and their their, their so yeah that's that's the biggest health concern for for consuming whale or dolphin or really any cetacean any high trophic level predator in the ocean mm -hmm. is susceptible to sequestering called sequestering uh, toxins so even things like tuna tuna salmon um, those guys are pretty high up on the food chain you'd be surprised mm -hmm. how uh, many things those things eat they, they act like basically lions those guys mm -hmm. so the things that eat the tunas are like super lions <laughs> the ocean's food web is not the same as, as a terrestrial food web so it's super lions yeah right. yeah like like sharks and whales are like super lions for for how high up on the trophic level they are it's a, and then you have orcas that are like super 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 lions <laughs> there's no equivalency but yeah so ultra lions it's a, it's a concern. yeah ultra lions that's what that's all an orca is it's an ultra lion <laughs> You heard it here for, again, you heard it here first. Time Magazine. Time Magazine, the old <laughs> new National Geographic article. <laughs> the, <laughs> the Ultra Lion. Orcas, the Ultra Lion. Are orcas the lions of the sea? <laughs> Find <laughs> our, our interview with <laughs> Charles Nye starting now. Mr. Dr. Professor President Charles Nye. <laughs> Dr. Professor President. That's interesting, though. I, I've never thought of it like that. A, a lot of people don't see that in because we eat tuna right we don't think of them as like predators mm -hmm. right but they are just as much predators as whales are mm -hmm. um so they have similarly high levels of toxins not as high but similarly so but yeah so to address the other concern yes whale meat dolphin meat are very rich in pollutants which is a problem for them and those who eat them so it's an ongoing problem you should just not be eating things like that anymore and people shouldn't be eating as much seafood as they are but stop eating whales guys come on man stop eating whales you heard it like uh, again we keep saying time magazine as a recurring joke but i'm serious they should <laughs> they're willing to put stop. me on the front <laughs> stop eating the whales free. i mean yeah no i i feel it dude i i don't think you should mm. eat whales but at the same time i love whales i mean that would we all um, yeah. And I feel like they wouldn't taste good. I, I don't want to learn. <laughs> like, uh, I don't, I don't want to know if they taste good or not. That, that's a that's a question that I think needs to be lost to time. You know? <laughs> no one needs that information. <laughs> Does whale taste good? Oh, we don't know. The records, the, the, the archives are incomplete. The archives are incomplete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, but okay. Yeah. But what is... Okay. So whales are still being hunted, and so but I thought not, this was not to the extent that they used to be. Got not, it. Not like it's not, it's not. You know, nothing. No whales gonna go extinct because people are hunting it. Um, there's different reasons why they might go extinct, but no whales are going extinct because of overhunting right now. So that's a good thing. Uh, in a, I mean, it's not great that they're still threatened, but at least it's not because we're shooting harpoons into them. There's different reasons what what we're doing to them, but. But yeah, go on. I was gonna say, like, what keeps people hunting whales? Uh, it, it's that's a hard question to answer because it's a cultural thing primarily, right? And you know, it, it it's a fine line to walk when you you being like, let's say, a regulatory body in the U.S. Like, let's say you're 
managing the whales off the American coastline, right? But mm-hmm. there's like indigenous tribes who still want to hunt the whales for their tradition. Mm-hmm. Who are you to say what they can and cannot take? But also, like, traditions sometimes aren't good anymore, you know? Like, things tr- evolve over time. Like, traditions change over time. What's to say that the, tra- the traditions of Japan and Iceland and all that can't change? Mm-hmm. But yeah, very fine line to walk, but it's mostly because of what people perceive as like unbreakable traditions mm-hmm. or things that it's always been this way. Like we've done this for m- so many years and I understand that. Uh, so you got to, you know, again, walk the fine line. One of the reasons why I'm doing my research on the gray whales. Oh, so I should backtrack and say that my research is about uh, the diet in gray whales. Mm-hmm. Gray whales being one of the big baleen whales. And part of the reason why we're so interested in them is because um, some native tribes uh, that live in, in the contiguous U.S. Uh, want to resume hunting the, this particular group of gray whales, but they're not well known. So you say whale known? Tribes. Is that what you no, just whale said? Known. Uh, not intentionally, <laughs> but we're going we're to say yes. <laughs> anyway, so you were saying sorry. Yeah. So, you know, it's good. I couldn't <laughs> help myself. Known. That's going in my uh, thesis presentation. Hope you know that they're not whale known. Oh my god! Uh, to, you better record to the that. Chagrin of everybody it. watching. Oh yeah, totally. It's gonna be public. It'd be great. <laughs> but yeah, because they're not well known, uh, we want to learn more about them, right? What they're eating and how much mm-hmm. of the, what they're eating and all that fun stuff. So um, characterizing them is important to making next decisions on how to go about navigating that legal landmine, right? Like who gets? Why should they be allowed to hunt the whales? How many? Are they allowed to take? Mm-hmm. You know, is that is that satisfactory for their you know cultural needs? Do they need to take more? You know, can they take less, fewer? Um, so big debates right now about those guys. Mm-hmm. So yeah, ongoing problems. But uh, that's why I still have a job, and that's why we need to be. That's why you need to listen to others and talk and communicate because it's so easy for people to like, oh yeah, of course, you know, we shouldn't be hunting whales. I think that. But there's nuance, right? Mm-hmm. There, there's people where you have to listen to the opposition and like, okay, why do they want to continue their hunt? And can we come to a middle ground or can we come to an understanding? What if Too the op- many... well, what if the opposition mm-hmm. just says because it's fun? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. But That'd be a mess up. You gotta up. hear that too. <laughs> <laughs> it's as messed up as much as I think it is. You gotta, you gotta hear it and you have to understand it and then from there talk about it. Mm-hmm. You know, like people like to want to resume hunting certain kinds of fish because it's sport fish, right? But maybe they're endangered. Same thing. But you know, of course, I'm going to disagree in most fronts. But that's because I'm, as you know, a marine biologist. <laughs> I'm kind of biased, right? You say you're biased. <laughs> uh, regrettably so, Andy. <laughs> I mean, that makes that, that does make sense though. Mm. But because I always thought, like, I don't know, there's no reason for people to do that anymore. So why yeah, no, even totally. why even continue doing it? You get what I mean? Yeah, no, I mean I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Mm-hmm. I mean I, I still think that too, but like <laughs> now that you told me that there's like a cultural precedent for it, I'm I don't want to say more lenient about it, but it's just like I, I understand it the issue a bit more. That yeah, there's more it, like, nuance there, there is nuance, and there, there's just you know there, there's a reason why things aren't you know so black and white. You know. I mean, my idea of someone hunting whales is like a Captain Planet villain. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> and soon all the whales will be gone. Stop oh, right oh, there. Oh. Heart. <laughs> is it Don Cheel? <laughs> it's Don Cheel. <laughs> Heart. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's almost the pla- it's, it's Captain Planet and his and his racial stereotype Planeteers. <laughs> Let's do it, guys. Let's do it. Yes. Same thing. Same Let day. our powers combine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is he T'Challa now? He's T'Challa. I mean, Kwame was basically like just dude Kwame, straight, yeah, straight out of yeah, Africa. Just... Then he had Wheeler from Boston. I mean, he literally sounds just like Joey Wheeler too. That's the problem with all the, those '80s TV shows. Is like even like not even '80s, but like stretching stretching into the '90s. The original Power Rangers was pretty. Not great either <laughs> for racial stereotypes. Real was it? You had Trini was the Yellow Ranger and Zach was the Black Ranger. <laughs> no, 
but maybe that wasn't intentional. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it was intentional, but it definitely didn't. You know, it's like read the room, guys. <laughs> that's that's fair. That's a fair assessment. Like nudge, nudge. nudge. They changed it at the first season or whatever, but like. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. that's still funny to me though. How's your Allosaurus going, Andy? Um, pretty good. I'm making a little chibi one right here. Oh, nice. I'm trying to like to draw these kind of like with the mindset of giving them like character. So Allosaurus, I think, is kind of like the everyman the theropod dinosaur. So I'm thinking more like characterizing them based on like the tarot cards. Not precisely, but like his personality would kind of be like the fool. The optimist, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure whether to make him look determined or like bright-eyed and stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll make him bright. I'll make him cute. I always make my theropods look really scary. Yeah, yeah. so incredibly scary, Andy. Like I definitely don't want to cuddle the T-Rex that you draw. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the cheapy little arms. Like, oh no, so terrifying. Oh no, he's gonna he's gonna hug me to death. He's, he's, he's gonna. He doesn't want to be fed. He wants to hunt. I think this is actually really cute. This might this might be the pin. For the, yeah, for the you think so? Set. I think so. I just gotta clean it up more. Have you already announced that? Uh, keep it a secret, guys. <laughs> I didn't mention <laughs> it. Yet. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. <laughs> it'll be. He doesn't announce that. It'll be out when it's out. <laughs> I'm planning. I mean, I'm planning a Kickstarter in May. Oh, this. You know, the people who watch this this uh, podcast yeah, there, when it's released, like this was recorded like before May. Whenever this comes out on YouTube, <laughs> I guess. But yeah, um, that's gonna be a fun fun thing to announce anyway back to you charles back to you what are your print projects right now what are what are your paleo projects what do you got going on the, in the oven right now man so I, i'm doing a, a commission right now that i can't show anyone right now and i got um commission, it's a, right there uh, it's on the stream <laughs> oh the, the t-rex commission <laughs> got it got it no no, no the t-rex isn't, isn't a commission but uh i'm doing an, another commission for a book someone wrote and uh so yeah, that's been fun. Uh, there's a mammal involved, so it's been interesting learning how to draw a little fuzzy thingy. Because um, I don't do mammals very often. I, I do mostly reptiles. Mm -hmm. But uh, So that's been a fun learning experience. But uh, So yeah, I'm doing uh, that commission. I'm making a T-Rex. Really, it's, it's, for, it's for me, but uh, one of my younger followers, um, Elik, is a... I forgot how old he is, but his, his mom follows my Instagram account, and... Uh, she shows him all the dinosaurs I make, and he's so excited when it happens. Um, mm -hmm. He actually sent me a little T Rex drawing that he made. Um, oh, that's so super cute! I, I'm, I'm paying paying it forward <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> by making a T Rex for him. Um, but it, it, yeah, it, it's because I want to draw a T Rex, and also because I feel like you know, it'd be nice to, you know, make him a print and send it to him or something. And mm -hmm. then um, probably, hopefully, he doesn't watch this. Keep it a secret. Keep it a surprise. Um, Don't tell the kid. Don't I want to. I want to do a Deinonychus um, at some point too, but that, that got pushed back because I need to find a good way to render out uh, Panacea's feathers. I haven't found out a good way to do that mm -hmm. in my current. Uh, not even my current art style. Like in any art style I've ever tried, I, I'm not great with Panacea's feathers because they're so um, they're so detailed. I mean, all you gotta do is just draw each feather. Yeah, just I, I gotta sit down for. You just gotta sit down for 16, ten hours. Sixteen hours and have at it. I think the longest <laughs> I've ever spent on a piece was maybe like eight hours mm. total work time. I think because your comics take forever. I mean, okay, so the latest one I just I literally just finished it today, but it won't be out publicly probably till May. But it was the Diablo Ceratops. Like I literally finished it five minutes. I mean, you were there five minutes before the stream. I finished it. It felt so good because I could move on. But like, the I think the total time was um, I want to say forty three hours. I think. Oh. Which isn't bad because my other comics with the old art style, because of how precise I had to be with the colors because they were so solid. Um, I had to. If th those took me like up to fifty. The most was probably like sixty, I think. And what was the longest one you've ever done? Like, <sighs> like which one? Do you remember? I d it was. It might have been, maybe not Therizinosaurus. One of the ones before that, maybe Dilophosaurus. Really? Okay. Oh, the Dilo, yeah, because that was very, very detailed, if it's, I remember. Because you, you did the Dennis Nedry stuff and all that. That was yeah. Was I mean, cool, I, I think a, a lot of it is also like planning out my panels because i'm i'm always like trying to find like 
um that's fair a that's creative fair. like way to present the information so yeah yeah with that one i was like how do i end this and i kept thinking of different ideas i draw the jurassic park jeep and he's like inside it like messing up dennis nedry do i <laughs> you know or do i show him in the rain like how can i present this in an f- interesting way and i finally decided you know from nedry's perspective and he's going like ah and then you know the alpha source is coming towards him in the rain i was like oh it make a very nice and moody scene and i think it came out pretty yeah, well yeah yeah Although it's, for me, it's hard. Okay. It's hard to look at my old art, like art that I finished. I love it when I finish it. Like I look at this and I'm just like, Oh yeah, I'm the bomb, dude. I am. I am art Jesus. I'm paleo art Jesus. I'm coming down. I'm like Superman in the Snyder Cut when he goes to the sun and yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does the Jesus. Thing. Yeah, the Jesus pose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I feel. And then like maybe like a week later, I'll look at it and I'm just like, Oh, there's this mistake. But then the people, people like it, you know. People like yeah. it still, and but then yeah. it, it 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 confuses me. I don't know why. Like I can't enjoy it, you know. I can't. Yeah. I hate that I can't enjoy my art the way other people enjoy my art. You know. Do you feel the same way? Well, that, that's that's every content creator or anything. anyone who makes stuff. It doesn't matter if you make art or like music or whatever. People have a hard time looking back at things they've done. Like me too. Like I I purged my uh, Instagram of all my older stuff because I just can't look at it. You know, it's just it's it's not where i wanted to be mm. right it reminds me of times when maybe things weren't great or i i could have done this better or that better and that i get stuck in that you know i agree i agree and i think yeah yeah and it's like part of the thing i one of the someone in the chat said like uh, never done with their art they get tired of it <laughs> um yeah. i i do feel like i get done with things but i do get tired of it really quickly like it's it's unfortunate but i think it's anyone who makes stuff feels that way because they're constantly changing and learning new things and you should always be yeah no I agree. that means you're you're growing i feel like it's important to learn to um as an artist at least like move on from your work and not get stuck mm. on one thing and i think at least for me like that's what led to my like improvement over the past like year i've been doing these comics like for yeah dude it's, it's it's been really cool seeing the growth and all that it's been really i mean it's been an honor there's a part where I'm just like, all right, I'm done with this. This is done. I'm done. I'm gonna leave this alone. I don't want to. I don't want to work on this anymore. And then I release it, and then I just move on to the next thing. And I guess that's what keeps me going. I mean, yeah, I agree. I've seen your growth too. Like, I, cause I've technically followed you since. I don't know. What was three? Years? Since you were very young. <laughs> I was saying, in my head. I was about to say, what's 2021 minus three? <laughs> Says the guy who does math for a living. It's eight. It's 2018. Yeah, I've I've been following you since I started my Instagram account. Of all the people we talked to, Andy, I, I think I think Mateo has everyone else beat in duration because I, I I found a message from him from like 20 um 2017 2016 because mm-hmm. I I messaged him recently about something and I don't think I messaged Mateo. <laughs> you like scrolled up. Ever. I scrolled up by like a little bit, and it was like, "Oh shoot!" It- <laughs> what did it say? What did it say? Put him a tail on the Oh, I, I think I, I did. I think I did like a, a thing, like, "Oh yeah, what dinosaur should I draw next?" And he was like, a uh, Orodromius or something like that. And um, I didn't do it. Uh- <laughs> Dang! I can't believe you. Did- Why you gotta do that to our guy Mateo, man? You know, if Mateo asked me now to draw an Orodromius, I would do that for him in a heartbeat. Mateo, in the chat, <laughs> go go right now. Say, Charles son, Charles son, please. Please draw uh, Ornithodromaeus when you guys There you go. <laughs> I, I don't know if it was Ornithodromaeus or like the other one that's like or- Orchi drum whatever. You know what I mean, right? It's the it's the other one <laughs> that's spelt. Ori- uh, Oreo, the the the. the Oreo Dromaeus, yes, yes. The one that actually, comes in the packet, look. the cookie flavor one. Yeah, actually, let me go look. <laughs> yeah, because I DM'd him recently, or relatively recently at least. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, it was Ornithodromaeus. Yeah. Uh, at one point, Orodromius was on my list of things to draw. And I don't know what happened to to it. I used to have a like, big Google spreadsheet of uh, dinosaurs I wanted to draw, and they just sometimes, you know, it doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I feel uh, it. Had an Archelon and stuff. Oh, not it wasn't even just dinosaurs. Wait a second, that's a not a dinosaur, man. That's not a dinosaur. Guys, that's, cancel, that's cancel Pink Panic right now. He said that's not a dinosaur. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, you call Godzilla a they. That's I, I called him an, an it. <laughs> I called Godzilla. Oh, you called it. I thought, I thought you, uh, I, I thought you uh, put in the comic, uh, they. People got, got upset about it. It was more like, how do, you, how do you not use Godzilla's pronoun, he? I'm just like, it's it, okay. The reason I said it in the Godzilla comic I released today was mainly because, okay, mainly I because he, uh, or see, I already said he. <laughs> I mean, casually, I will refer to Godzilla as a he 
or whatever, right? But like, I think the the, the one, the individual one, is a, is a male. Is it? I, the I one mean, we see. I think so. Okay, I mean, like, but it's not confirmed in the canon. It's not mentioned. I I like did research when I did this too. I was like, is Godzilla confirmed male in the you know legendary verse? He he probably is. I know the filmmakers refer to him as a he, but like. For the sake of like keeping it like kind of sciency, like there's an actual like report. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like what do you call this? Augmented reality? Is that the term people would use for that? Aug augmented reality, Andy. That that's Pokemon Go. <laughs> <laughs> you you know what I mean, um, man. You know what I mean. But yeah, 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 it's it's like a it's like role play. Yeah. You know, it's like you know, what if you're or like you're playing along with the the notion like yeah yeah Godzilla is a real thing. Let's let's talk about him like he's a real thing. Exactly. That's what I was trying to do. And like, also, you know, Mateo, yes, I will draw you another drum, yes, soon, after maybe, after, after stream, I'll sketch you one up. Hold me to that. Oh. But you better, Charles. And I, I didn't say I'd be good, I'm just gonna do one. <laughs> <laughs> I never promised him a good one, I just promised him one. <laughs> and that's all I get. That's it. That's the end. But, you hear um... that? <laughs> what was I gonna say? But yeah, no, this one guy complained about, like, Godzilla, like, me calling Godzilla an it. He's like, use Godzilla's correct pronoun, he. And it's like, chill, man. It's, it's a fictional lizard who breathes fire. Like, calm down. <laughs> Free fire, he does an atomic breath. It's atomic energy that he charges at his, his, at his uh, skeleton and stuff. Okay, <laughs> what I don't get about Godzilla's atomic breath, right, mm. is it starts at his tail. Okay. Why? You know, like, well, the, the, the plates start, you know, going at the tail, and they go up his spine. Yeah, I get that, but, like, why do they start glowing at the tail? You know why? Like, like, like... Because it's It cool, doesn't make man. sense to me that's where the nuclear... I, I mean, guess, but, like... <laughs> the nuclear reaction doesn't start at the tail, surely. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I think it's... I, it, just, it just looks cool, like, in 2014... Oh yeah, totally. Oh, skink, I'm just saying. Skink of death, draw with us, dude. Just draw whatever me and Charles are drawing right now, man. Just draw with us and share it on Twitter when you're done, man. But um, yeah, Charles, I don't know. Brother. I just think it looks cool. Like in 2014, the 2014 movie. The whole time, oh, yeah. I remember when I first saw that movie. I was in theaters. I was just like, did they did they just take out Godzilla's atomic breath? Did they say like like it was too like, unrealistic? I was about to be pissed because I thought it was never gonna show up. And then at the very yeah, end, the money shot appears. I'm just like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, give it to my, me. My dad was uh, watching it with my brother and I, and my, my dad's a pretty stoic man for the most part. But he like got up and to see him, was like, yeah. <laughs> Godzilla like did the breath for the first time because my dad's a big uh, uh -huh. like a uh, kaiju guy, kaiju uh, mecha kind of dude, right? And um, so you know his inner child probably engaged. No, it was really funny mm -hmm. to see him go, like, yeah, because <laughs> I felt that way too. But he actually got up from his seat. It's like, Anak, did you see that? Did you see that one? He get the the breath from his uh his his mouth, you know, from his tail hanggang uh sa likod niya, you know, it went and boom, you know. <laughs> I love how you, whatever you, as like you know, do the the faux parent voice. Like, you assume my parents have the thick Filipino accent. Well, cause mine do. I know you yours don't, but like mine, all my life I've just been surrounded by like Filipino uncles and aunties who have had like the super strong ass accent and it's like oh uh, no don't get me wrong my uncles and, and aunties also have the really thick accent yeah i don't know why my parents i mean they're probably like but i like, mean well, your dad was in military right my dad no what did your dad do my, my dad uh work, works in uh, food manufacturing oh i don't know what does your mom do he's, 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 my mom works at a cancer clinic is she a nurse <laughs> no <laughs> Do not perpetuate stereotypes. <laughs> I was just assuming she's it's like she's a nurse, isn't she? <laughs> you like Krabby Patties, don't you just like quit <laughs> yeah, but, Okay, no, I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah, that's weird then. I don't know. Like, how do your parents talk then? American accent? Like, I, the, you, you get to hear that it's not their first language, but it's not like Supa at the Galo, you know, like. I don't know. Charles, and I don't, I don't uh, say possible, but. Kainatayo, <laughs> come on, let's go. You know, I mean, like, if you go to, like, especially because, okay, so my, on my mom's side, my, um, every, almost every person on my mom's side has come to America within the last, like, six, seven years, right? On my dad's side, 
everyone's pretty much Americanized. Like my, of course, my uncles and aunts on my dad's side have the accent, but all my cousins yeah, yeah. have English as their first language. And only I think I'm the only one on my dad's side who can speak Tagalog. Uh huh. You know? Oh yeah. no, no no no! Actually no no no! My one of my cousins can speak it, and his uh-huh. and his kids. But on my mom's side, everyone there, you know, fresh off the boat, right? Fresh off the plane, they all speak Tagalog, right? And uh-huh. so they now had to um, adjust to Amer- being American. And it's yeah. very interesting because I used to live with them in the Philippines, right? And uh-huh. I would get made fun of because you know I could only speak English for a while. It took it took me a long time to start speaking Tagalog because I would get made fun of when I tried. Oh. Yeah, and I feel like that's a that's a big, that's a, like its own like critique of Filipino cultural in general, <laughs> crab mentality, yeah. right? But like, yeah, yeah. Now that they're here, I'm the one helping them like speak English, and I'm speaking Tagalog to them, and they like, I don't know. I guess they just accept it because like. But the, but but then they pretend like nothing ever happened, right? Yeah. Like there's no there's no there's no I'm sorry or you, you know what like. You, you speak it good like they don't they don't say that i mean my aunts say that now which is very funny i Did mean they? my cousins like would tease me but it, like it wasn't as bad i had friends in high school who would tease me about it and i just spoke english oh, okay i thought i thought it was like your family like making it really bad and then they're like you know coming no to you for help and... it wasn't as bad as like i guess some people would have it it was like here and there but it wasn't super bad when i think when mainly when i started speaking and i got better that's when they started like really like taking it seriously like you know, say Andrew, magaling na nag Tagalog, grab it. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, salamat tito. You know, I'm just, I'm just trying, you feel me? You know, and then like, uh-huh. but there's a lot of words I don't know. So I would, I would end up speaking um, Taglish. Uh-huh. Yeah, but it's whatever. <laughs> this, this is America. <laughs> I can say what I want. It's going to be really funny when I go to Japan and meet my, like, my Japanese relatives and start speaking Nihonglish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I'll start saying like random English words like hi Anonewa uh like and also like a verb and then she must that's at least that's what I feel like I'm gonna end up saying like hey I don't know uh running <laughs> she must running she tells me uh tells me a weeb in chat just so you know am i a weeb if i have family in japan mm-hmm. am I, I think you're a weeb by blood at that point Andy. <laughs> yeah, it's, my, I think it's unavoidable my samurai ancestor <laughs> Stupid. we must love beef and godzilla we must we must believe in god let them fight. <laughs> let them fight oh well, yeah i mean are, are you dr sikazawa <laughs> Do you speak any other language besides English, Charles? Or have you tried learning? Uh, I, I can get by on Tagalog. I'm not willing to say it on, on camera or on record. Um, but I, I feel like I could survive. Um, you know, I had to learn Spanish in high school. So I know rudimentary Spanish, right? And if, mm-hmm. again, just to get by. Like, I, I wish I learned more languages, honestly. I feel like that's a very good skill. Very, like, r- global skill. Mm-hmm. Diplomatic, I think is the right word for it too. Just, just because you know, it makes it, it looks like you care <laughs> about other cultures and that, and I think that's a really cool thing to do, right? You're um, you on Chinese, but I just never, never happened mm-hmm. for for like my timeline in school or whatever. Just I, I, yeah, I only had to do enough to get by, and I learned some American Sign Language, so um, and that surprisingly stuck pretty well. Um, I, I've been using it actually. I've been mixing it into my everyday, you know quote quote conversations because i have a mask on all the time so mm-hmm. i'll make gestures like thank you and stuff like that and mm-hmm. uh, yeah so i wish i did i wish i spoke more languages and that's something i want to do you know, someone might mistake you for I... native american because you're you're brown too man I, i've been, I've been what tribe? for a puerto what rican you from? <laughs> puerto rican so oh so really people in diam yeah and I'm like yeah nope <laughs> nope nope i'm a voyager man i'm a <laughs> I'm a further funny. west, buddy. Further west, man. <laughs> Interesting. Thank you, though. <laughs> people, people don't think I'm Filipino. People think I'm like Viet or like like Mong. I see it. Or like Chinese. It's because I'm like I'm pretty like I'm like less brown than most average Filipinos. Yes, amen. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very oh, only during summertime do I ever feel like my my ethnicity. It's summertime, dude. When I went to like. When I go to like Seafood City, 
in the Bay Area. Oh my area. god, I haven't heard the name in years. And you know, like, <laughs> see, I'm not going to go to Seafood City. Or Ranch 99. When I go to Ranch 99 or 99 Ranch Market, uh, uh, as they call uh, it, I, that's how, that's the real name. I used to say Ranch 99 all the time. People corrected me. Um, uh, Pete, like you know, they would say like, "Nah, how? Ah, not sure, sure, Like you know, it's like they would talk like Mandarin or like Cantonese to me, and I'd just be like, "Yeah, yeah." Uh, Shay Shay. <laughs> No man, I'm Filipino. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, but I can't. Oh, you're Filipino. Oh yeah. <laughs> you you trick me. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Once I get my my ancestry DNA test, watch. Well, gonna say like I don't know. Sorry, so I'm gonna see if like my mom's claims that I'm part Chinese. How true that is. She said our my great grandparents are supposedly Chinese. My great grandparents. So we'll see. Again, you'd be surprised. I'm just waiting for the confirmation that maybe maybe they was Japanese, you know. What I'm saying? Confirmation. <laughs> confirmation. It was in my blood the entire yeah. time. It's like, Andy, what are you doing? I'm praying to my Japanese ancestors, the samurai. <laughs> the samurai. I have studied the blade. Also, I, I just want to say I'm getting frustrated trying to design this um, stegosaurus. Hold on, I will be right back really quick. I gotta grab my notebook because it has some of my old sketches of stegosaurus that I think I'm gonna try to copy. I'll be right back. Hi chat, how you doing? I've always wanted to Twitch stream, but I've never done it. So this is my chance to live a different life for a little bit. Um, what did they say? They say they say poggers in chat now. Like, uh, is it? No, no, that that got canceled. My bad. Um, uh, dang it! Hi, hi. Wait, what, <laughs> what were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> I was just talking to chat for, for a whole of uh, 30 seconds. How's it going, chat? How's it going? <laughs> Gamers! What's up? Well, make sure to like, favorite, and subscribe. <laughs> um, also, gamers. Gamers in the chat. I'm going to be playing Monster Hunter this Friday or Thursday, whenever the game comes out, whenever I get it. So stay tuned for that. Um, but hey, anyway. Look at you. We were talking about... Monopolizing. So is there is there a reason that you haven't like really tried to like learn Tagalog? It's just the time, like like honest to God, like uh, whenever I, I I have so many like other hobbies and things I want to get done, right? That like it just kind of falls to the wayside. I would never like sit down and try to learn it in my own time. Mm -hmm. it, it's just hard, right? Like especially now I'm in grad school. Mm -hmm. Like time is a very priceless commodity. True, like, true. Do I work on my thesis stuff? Do I relax? Do I? <laughs> Uh, work on my book do i work on more paleo art do i work on all this stuff right um there's always something to do and mm -hmm. so learning a new language is, has always fallen a little bit to the side and maybe in the future maybe you know in, in a couple of years i'll be able to partition the time to do it oh this, also this diplodocus i'm really happy with it um mm -hmm. maybe uh but yeah that just happens good. when you thanks it just happens when you live a life like mine mm -hmm. where yeah all right. Every Saturday, I'm only gonna DM you in Tagalog. <laughs> I know you, you said that before. I'm like, ah, here we go. I, I will hold up. I will, I will hold that up now, so we practice. So I could get practice because I, I I don't I don't talk a lot in Tagalog anymore. In Tagalog, yeah, because yeah. oh, I have no one to talk to. <laughs> like I, when I visited my sister's house, like my my aunt lives with my sister, right? And really, yeah, she's the only one I was I was speaking Tagalog to. Like, I think that's not gonna. Okay, uh -huh. you know, like just you know, talking, you know, basic, basic stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, you know, yeah. Get, put it, put a poggers in the chat if you're bilingual. <laughs> put a poggers. Do you have like a like a a thing when people say something in chat yet, or you have to be verified first? Oh, uh, what do you mean? You know, like those pop ups? Um, I think I have to be verified first before I get like any oh, okay, okay. kind of like bonuses. Or like a custom emojis and stuff like that. Yeah, I need to get like verified, like really verified. All right, Charles, designing Stegosaurus is a pain. It is. I'm trying. I'm trying to decide how to like to proportion this guy to make him like chibi. Here, let me let me open your. I'm I'm actually not watching Andrew's stream right now because I'm conserving my my bandwidth. Let me go see. CPU. I mean, I have I have my stream up on my phone, just to like check <laughs> the viewership and such. Oh, so, I need Twitch so, affiliate the, for emotes. Okay, well, well, here I'll put I'll put. Uh, I guess I can't put an emote on here. Problem with uh, Stegosaurus is that like, there's really only one 
not one good way to do it, but like, here, let, let me, let me show you what, what, what I mean. But like, a lot of people do it like this, where it's just kind of like the, mm. where's my, where's my brush? I'm on a racer. Where it's like the, the chibified like thing where the head and neck are super tiny. Yeah. Right? Because the, the main thing about Sega Source is the plates. It's the thing. It's the plates, right? Like, people will do this kind of situation, right? But I want to have the neck long to match the skirt. I know. Ah! Uh, you know what I mean? like, I'm not even going to try, but like, uh, here, let me let me give it a go. So if you want to make the neck long, like, it's going to it's gonna be interesting, right? Because mm -hmm. the head has to be big, too, because making it cheapified. I might just I'm have to... to call it quits and just shorten the neck yeah like I'm, I'm trying to think of a good way to do it and i don't oh this is not bad like this kind of mm. situation and then you, you know mm. do all the rest of the nonsense yeah. right there i, I don't know we'll uh, make it make it trying. a slug and it will <laughs> crawl it yeah. slowly crawls along the jurassic landscape also anonymous no, 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 um no. i just need to stream for one more day after this stream and i'll be a twitch affiliate Wow. Yeah, and after that, I'm gonna, e I'm gonna make custom emotes and all that, and have the subscriber button, and yeah, all the fun stuff. Be a lot of fun. Got you, gamers. Hey, gamers. But yeah. You're also gonna play games now too, and everything. You're gonna, you're gonna diversify your assets. <laughs> Stream Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> Honestly, we still haven't played. That'll be. Fun. We can play. I guess we can play like over the the week. When you're when you're more yeah I, I have to switch here now but um yeah we can do that sometime soon um yeah I have to train <laughs> you're the best around <laughs> nothing is gonna let you know <laughs> yeah, okay so spe bad. speaking of video games what what video games does a marine biologist play Stardew Valley <laughs> <laughs> honest honest to God Stardew Valley is the only video game I play and I think for good reason it, it's just Remember what I said about time and then what what I want to do and stress mm -hmm. paleontology, no paleontology, um, you know, being in grad school and all that. Stardew Valley is the answer to a lot of my stress problems. Mm -hmm. This is just you plug in, you know, you, you you sit down, partition a few hours, lose yourself to it, and then oh look, it's time to go to bed. Like no stress, no, no like sweaty palms. Or edge of your seat. No palms are sweaty. Stuff. No, no palms, knees no, weak. No, arms no are mom's heavy. spaghetti either. <laughs> mom's yeah, spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> There's vomit on a sweater already. Yeah, you'd be surprised, man. But th that's what I play, I, and I, I, that's all the time I have to play. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I can't sit down and get good at a game for for you know hours and hours and hours, right? Mm -hmm. Right. It's just I wish I had more time in my day. Like if there were only more hours. To do all the things I want to do, I want to play Prehistoric Kingdom when it comes out for one hundred percent for sure. I feel like everyone's all about that Prehistoric Kingdom, Kingdom like, grind for, for good reason, dude. It's, it's great to see that there's actual, you know, not actual progress, but like, like the releasing stuff now that's close to what it will look like at the end of you know development, which is very exciting because I've been following this game for freaking ever. I agree. I agree. Um, I feel like the two like pillars of dinosaur gaming are gonna end up being. Path of Titans. Okay. And, um, what do you call this? Path of Titans and Prehistoric Kingdom. Kingdom. Sorry, Jurassic World Evolution. You missed it. <laughs> I actually really liked Jurassic World Evolution when it came out. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, I, I hated <laughs> it when it came out. When it came, like when it really? first, when it first came out, I hated it. Oh, I, I, I I'm just a shill. It was, I don't know. it I, was buggy. Um, you know, the, what, the you get dinosaur behavior. I had it on PC. Oh, shoot. I had an Xbox and it was probably worse on that. I don't know. I just like you could ask uh, my old housemates at the time because I, when I got the game, I pre ordered it right. Mm. And like when I got home, you know, that, that's my, my first night playing it. I, I was up almost all, not all night, but until a ludicrously like late time of night playing that stupid game. And then every day when I got home, <laughs> just like, all right, guys, I'm going to my room. Bye. No, like the TV was in the living room, so they'd hang out and watch, you know, and play with me. But like, 
that's all I did for a little while. <laughs> it was just Jurassic World Evolution. Damn, I'm, I don't know. I enjoyed it because I think I'd like I didn't play a Dinosaur Tycoon game in so long, uh, so I wanted anything. Like this anything. is it. Sorry, I'll do anything, man. I'll do anything. I'll do anything for a dinosaur game, man. Please. <laughs> for, 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 scratch the itch. <laughs> Y'all got any more of them uh, d dinosaur park simulators? <laughs> You're right. No, I, I, I get what you mean. I I mean I did get back into it when the Jurassic Park DLC was announced. So, oh, that was a good one. Like by the time like that came out, like the month that came out, um, they fixed most of my issues I had with the game. Like a lot of the behavior problems, a lot of like the dumb like, like you know, time like because for me it was it felt less like a park simulator, more like a time man like a management simulator. Yeah, it was a disaster management simulator. Yeah, which is why I spent a whole lot of time in freaking um, Isla Mar Marte sandbox. Oh, sandbox. Well, for me, it was like... I, I finished the campaign super mm -hmm. fast. Like, to, to me, it's not a hard game. Mm -hmm. Just because I, I played Tycoon games a lot. I, I, uh, City Skylines, I don't know if you ever played that game. That was one of my favorite games, too, mm -hmm. um, for a little while. Um, and also, all, all the old Zoo Tycoon games were, were right up my alley, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, coming back to play a, a Tycoon game, uh, at least one that felt good after like the disappointment that was the new zoo tycoon i don't know if you saw the new zoo tycoon when it came out Wait, it was right? bad uh, the one for console it was i i didn't out, i didn't play it by the way i Good. didn't play it <laughs> well okay well, explain if you ever to me. played the older ones you'd be staunchly disappointed i did i, I did play the older ones i played two quite a lot but yeah two was my well, i played two one played jurassic park Operation and genesis the, those were my games growing up you know, more so than console games really ever were, I think. Um, I told you my history yeah. as a modder for JPOG, right? A little bit, uh, but feel free to indulge since we're it, on a public right. forum. You know? So I did like a lot of like modding for that game, and I did the, um, I did the first Walking with Dinosaurs mod for that game, along with the Jurassic Park mm. toy mod, which changed mm -hmm. all the dinosaur skins into the, um, the toy skins. I was like, I was very involved with the Jurassic Park community, like mm -hmm. in the um, like late two thousands, early twenty tens. Mm -hmm. like, like JP Legacy was probably like my favorite. Um, <laughs> my fa I, I went there every day. I was talking to like all these different mm -hmm. people. I don't even know if like where, like where are these people? There's one mod on that website who's Filipino, and I kind of bonded with him. Dang. But um, okay. Do do were you on JP Legacy back then? Back then, I would never had an account on JP Legacy, but I, I was like there, like I, I used it, but I never, you know, was active mm -hmm. on the community, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, I, I was there. Okay, because it was that was probably like for me a highlight of like being a dinosaur, like dinosaur nerd, I guess. Like just mm -hmm. joining the JP Legacy forum. You know, like, you know, I'm a kid in the Philippines. No one likes dinosaurs over there. <laughs> oh, you were in the Philippines during that time. Okay. Yeah. So you, you hadn't come here yet. Yeah. It's like, no one likes dinosaurs in the Philippines. You know, we don't even have dinosaurs in the Philippines. That's why no one cares. <laughs> I mean, we, the fossils that are in the Philippines are like, what? Well, we have like some prehistoric elephants, prehistoric rhino, rhinos. Oh, uh, no. I mean, those are cool, but they're not dinosaurs. You know what I mean? <laughs> F, yeah. F to all the uh, mammal oh, people in the chat. Dinosaurs. <laughs> all the mammal people in the chat. Like, you, you, you son of a. Seething. See, like, how dare you say that dinosaur comics? Babbles are my favorite. Oh, too bad. <laughs> Boo hoo. Mm -hmm. I said it. There, I said it. No one else wanted to say it, but I did. But yeah. So, I mean, like, I, I just needed that, like, interaction with my hobbies i mean because i had a, i had so many friends who like anime right but i didn't have any friends yeah, yeah. who were into like dinosaurs or like most people grew out of it by, by the, the time you like got really into yeah. it and, or like you, you kind of stayed there yeah yeah no i don't know what you mean like same thing over here like i i yeah my friends who liked dinosaurs but like it wasn't a major interest of theirs right and that's okay but mm -hmm. like God, I, I don't even know when I found people who liked dinosaurs, dinosaurs as, as much as I do. I knew it was online, mm -hmm. right? But, like, I, I don't remember when, but it must have been during my Tumblr days or something. But, but yeah, I, um, in person, never. But that's just 
<laughs> comes with the territory, I guess. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet in person. Not yet. Well, well, when I uh, met Avery, you know, like she, she was very much into dinosaurs, but not as much, but enough to be like, oh, shoot. <laughs> I wish my... These people I, exist. I wish my GF was into dinosaurs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is Emily not into... Does she not like dinosaurs? I mean, she thinks they're cute, but it's not like she cares about the science or anything of them. Oh, come on. You know what I mean? I mean, but she, she, she's got to <laughs> care enough, you know, by after knowing you. Uh, yeah, for, for so long. I, mean, I don't bring it up a lot. It's not like I'm just like, babe, did you know that there was a new discovery about, you know, the integuments of the feathers and germanosaurus? <laughs> you know, it's not like she's going to Wait, care. you don't do that? Shoot. <laughs> Remember, I'm not dating a scientist like you are, man. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's, fair. that's <laughs> a bit of a unique <laughs> prospect. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, she knows, though, more about dinosaurs than most people at this point. That's fair. Which is funny. You yeah. think about it. Yeah, when you do think about it. I had a discussion with um, her dad about Spinosaurus, and he was like, "Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that there was more new science about that." I guess. Wait, wait, really? Yeah, that's funny. Well, I mean, you know, people... like how that how that come up in conversation though? Because that was when the tale for Spinosaurus was the paper on that was published, so it was ah, the, 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 it was actually the, yeah. on the news, right? So, oh, was it like on the popular news? Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. So yeah, oh, like uh, on websites or like on the news news, like, like TV, like on websites, man. No, on websites. Okay, I'll believe that. I thought you meant like you were watching TV. Well, no, no, it was, like, it was, it oh. was. I think it was on like CBS or whatever PBS. That's pretty cool. CNN. I don't know. One of those. One of those news, <laughs> news um things. Uh huh. But yeah, it's very um. It's a bonding moment. Definitely was a bonding moment. But yeah. Um, anyway, back to <laughs> let's talk relationship stuff. I don't want to spill all this on the <laughs> on the stream. More to oh, no, but like, yeah, it's fun, like you know, how interpersonal relationships and dinosaurs and all mm. that. You know? We don't have to talk about everything, mm. but yeah, it's a look into our lives. Okay, how did you get? How did you get into like paleo art specifically? Like, were you always an artist? Like, like, like art? the, yeah, it's like it depends on how you define paleo art, right? Because I've been drawing dinosaurs for so long. Mm. For, I think for, every for every kid has at some point. Yeah, yeah, every every child draws dinosaurs for so long. But when I started doing actual paleo art, that didn't really begin until my freshman year of college. I think it's when mm. I when I learned about how people do paleo art, how how there is scientific ways to make a dinosaur, mm -hmm. right? Like like you read papers. There's a whole bunch of information online, and this was a thing people did for a living. So my my first career prospect in, in after not after but during undergraduate was actually to become a scientific illustrator. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to do. Um, I I mean, you kind of are. I don't want to do that as a career. I, I, I know, but I don't want to do that as a career. Yeah. What do you mean? You don't want to like, either. you're like, please hire me to draw your dinosaur, please. I know, <laughs> please right? hire me for the scientific then, paper. Well, not to bash on people who are full-time artists, but like, that wasn't going to be for me because I, I want to draw things I want to draw. I mean, you know? you also, you truly are a starving artist when you do go into scientific illustration. At least that's what I think. I feel like the job market for scientific illustration is so, like, so competitive. And you got to compete it's with the people who already, like, you know, tried and true, like, you know, try like people who are, like, already reliable, who always yeah, get all the yeah. work done. Who already, like, work for museums or, like, have worked with museums exactly it's, it's very hard it's very hard um I, I have some friends who are actually trying or trying and succeeding to become full-time scientific illustrators but like it's it's not done easily right like they've had to do a lot to to get where they are today um so that all that in mind i decided it wasn't for me and um yeah that's how paleo art started though for me it's like oh yeah this is something i can actually do and after a little while, I was like, no, we're not doing this as a career. I'm going to do research instead, which pays a little better. <laughs> just a little bit. Just an ounce. Just no. an ounce. All right. All right. What's the, what's the, uh, what's, but what is the reality of doing research versus doing scientific illustration? Uh, well, I mean, there's as slim of a job market there is for research. It's still so much more abundant. And the, the skills, you know, if you want to go into industry, you know, like for, for skills like genetics or lab prep, right? That that's. That could be applied for, let's say, Any, almost anything. Yeah, almost anything. Actually, yeah. I could go into industry if I wanted to, um, mm. or I could stay in academia or whatever. Like, I haven't decided that yet. Um, Charles, you don't make a billion yeah. dollars working for Genentech. Or no, right? Or or, or uh, I'm trying to think of or, or 
or InGen or Umbrella Corp. <laughs> okay, okay. I, you but you don't know the company um, Genentech. No, I don't. Or not on my head. Can you? I mean, they're a biotech company um, in the Bay Area. Um, they have one facility in Vacaville. I have several. I know several people who've worked there. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, like they're they're a solid option. I actually know someone else. I met her in college. She works there too. Like mm -hmm. I, I looked her up on Facebook recently. I was like, oh, that's what you're up to now. Yeah. That's cool. But um, yeah, they're 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 hiring. Um, I think I think they did layoffs pretty recently, though. So I don't know. But yeah, I mean, this one <laughs> they're hiring. Oh, but you know, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, I take it back. I'm sorry, Charles. I didn't mean to. Uh, Oops. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, don't, don't take my word for it. But um. Oops, a Daisy. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like you'd be, you're gonna be okay, like, cause you have the skill set for both private and public. It's up to you, really, what you want to do. Thanks. I don't, but. Yeah, the, that's the prospect of the, the, the difference between scientific illustration and, you know, research stuff. It's like, I mean, I guess you could apply your scientific illustration skills to, like, graphic arts mm -hmm. or to, like, non-scientific illustration. But even then, there's, there's an overabundance in those industries, too, for, you know, be, uh, applicants versus opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all going to come to a head someday, I'm sure, and there's going to be a big movement to... Mm -hmm reevaluate what we value as a society for art and stuff That's i true. hope that happens for artists sake and i think there's so many talented people out there who need who will i think people should be able to like make a good at least a comfortable living doing what they love right yeah and, i agree uh, yeah so i hope there's a way right to, to accommodate for all that overabundance of, of workers versus positions and um yeah it it's sure to happen i i over optimistic maybe but i'm sure it's gonna happen at some point um charles too late if, for me what if my passion <laughs> is just running on all fours running on all fours how do i how do I, how do I get uh, physical how do i get paid to do that all forms of, except physical you're a wolf, <laughs> you're a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> just just go into the woods and you gotta <laughs> well well andrew if you want to be a wolf there's no need for money that's true that's true you just go out there and you 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 tackle a deer over. <laughs> <laughs> um, so okay, let's say someone wants to get into marine biology. What are their like job okay. like options, like as yeah, career there's, options there's, in that there's field? A, there's a surprising variety of career options if you want to become a marine biologist. Marine, but no one like here. Let me pull the curtain aside. No one is actually a marine biologist. Like the position, that there's no one. There's no job called marine biologist. Usually, sometimes there will be for like a like a generic like marine scientist position or something, or like a like consultant, right? Mm -hmm. But very rarely is someone called a marine biologist in like their job description or their job title. Um, there's so many subdivisions. So for for me, let's take me for example. Mm -hmm. I am a marine conservation geneticist. I mm -hmm. do genetics to apply that information to how do we conserve species or how do we evaluate their health or their abundance mm -hmm. and stuff, right? Th those are the questions I'm trying to address. Um, but if you're someone like Avery, who, who is my, my gal pal, who is uh, currently doing her PhD at the University of Oregon, she's doing uh, deep sea habitat evaluation, things like modeling, um, mapping, mm -hmm. uh, spatial studies like that um going down in submarines you know you could do things like that uh you could you some people honest to god work with sharks and evaluate their health not very many people do that but you can do that um but the biggest thing that is unavoidable in marine biology and i'm sorry for people who are listening to this math is you, you need math <laughs> there's no there's no way around it what but um, if okay if i want to talk to the dolphins <laughs> if i want to talk to the dolphins do i need math is that what you're you telling need me math the, the count the clicks <laughs> <laughs> the count the pulses. <laughs> i just want to play with the dolphins man i need math to do that play with them. it's funny actually uh here's some advice for anyone like any serious this is a, some serious advice um when I, when I first got into undergrad like orientation or was like my my first day there or whatever we were all the marine biology students the new ones uh we had our like a departmental talk right like oh welcome to cal state monterey bay we're gonna chat mm -hmm. about you know classes and expectations and all that we're so happy that you're here to give us money um 
the, one of the first things I heard was, if you want to work with sharks, whales, dolphins, or turtles, uh, leave you're probably now. not going to. Damn. Everyone leaves the room. And and then, no, here I am working with, with whales. But it's through, uh, I don't want to call it a roundabout way, but it's kind of a roundabout way. Like, I didn't go into college for the express purpose of studying whales, right? I didn't stay with it for the exp express purpose of studying whales. I just fell into a method that just so happens to be able to be applied for whales. So, so uh, that is very important about going into marine biology. It's not so much about your your subject. It's about the methods you use, mm -hmm. right? And how does that apply for these questions that are that are relevant to you know how we manage our oceans and protect what's what's here? Um, yeah, if anyone wants to talk more about marine biology jobs specifically, you can go ahead and DM me. Um, because there's a lot of things to be heard and advice I'd like to share because it's, I didn't know, mm. you know, coming into undergrad, I, I didn't know what the jobs were like, but there's so many mm -hmm. different fields to go into. I have some friends who are doing marine engineering. I have a friend who is a, who has only her bachelor's right now, and she's making almost 100k a year mm. <laughs> off marine uh, engineering. And she wants, she wants to go back to grad school to make more money. <laughs> 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 I'm like, oh, all right. I mean, the power to her. She's such a smart human being. She's so motivated and, and brilliant and power to her. But like, okay, <laughs> you want to make more money. <laughs> um, single income, almost six figures with a bachelor's degree. And you want more. Mm. Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot of options in here. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Don't give up. Don't give up. Do not, um, really, do not lose faith in Godzilla. <laughs> in Godzilla. <laughs> okay, so yeah, okay, so it sounds like there's I'm a... Right. Is, okay, so would you say this, the field itself is incredibly competitive? Incredibly competitive is, I think, uh, too harsh. Mm. Uh, it's competitive. It's compet definitely competitive. But okay. Some people, like, talk about it like it's impossible to get a job. Like, I somehow managed to squeeze my way through and get, you know, jobs and survive for for this long and not even survive but thrive you know like mm. for 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 this period of time to get to grad school and uh, i should mention that my art my, my grad school is currently being paid mm. <laughs> for like I, I have a scholarship so it's not incredibly competitive but any scientific any like non-profit scientific field is going to have competition right of course and it's about making connections and proving your worth and again I meant it when I said don't give up because there there are low points, mm. right? What's Definitely what, low points. What would you, you call the low points of it? Uh, really, it's it's the 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 existential crisis of what am I doing with my life? Yikes! Right? I didn't think we'd go yeah. there tonight. Uh, it, it's uh, there there are a few few times where you look in the mirror and you're like, what am I doing? You know, like you're evaluating you, you, which what you're doing here and why you're doing it and who you're doing it for. That's um, fair. I feel like that's any like any time you're in college, you if you if at, in college at some point you're always going to have like that kind of like what 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 the hell am I doing with my life? You know what I mean? Of course, yeah. That, but it's it's a little worse when like people talk so badly about mm -hmm. your prospects. Like no one tells an accountant or like a. a a physical therapist like oh you're never gonna find work you know it's too competitive mm -hmm. <laughs> there's always a demand for you know those kinds of people or doctors or nurses right mm -hmm. uh, no one ever tells you that if you're going to that people laud you for doing that but when people say you know when you say i'm gonna become a marine biologist they're like are you sure mm -hmm. you know what are you gonna do with that those things make you worry mm -hmm. and you know, people don't help that because I mean, people don't understand it you know, and, that, and and that's why I want people to, to know that there, there's ways to make this work, and it's surprisingly easy. Mm -hmm. It's just got to apply yourself and, and stick with it if this is what you really want to do. And there's nothing wrong with deciding ultimately it's not what you want to do. Because everyone has different walks of life. And again, I'm one of the weird people who decided early on that this is what I wanted to do and made it work. Mm -hmm. But for some people, it's not worth that. Right. And no shame in that. I, everyone needs to do what they want to do and what they feel comfortable with, right? That's my, that's my core philosophy right there. Mm. Also, let me check out Dinosaurus Rex's uh, art they just posted in chat. Let me look. Oh, that's really cute. 
Oh, I like the angle. Baby. I like the colors. The colors are really cute. There's a baby, Andy. There's yeah, a baby. I know. There's a, ba a child. When's, when's my, <laughs> my kudos? <laughs> a child. A child. <laughs> it's cute. There's only one thing worse than a T-Rex. Wow. Boom. A child. A child. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, in regards to what you just, what you just said, um, a part of me regrets going into psych and stats because originally what I wanted to do with psych was work as a, um, what do you call this? like sports sports psychologist so i would yeah, be working yeah. with like helping keep the mental um aptitude of athletes at peak level and stuff That's but cool. i found out that would require me to do a phd or like become like a military therapist but then that would require me to take on the burdens of other people and then i mean <laughs> eventually I found, I, I found my path right which is just yeah, yeah. using the statistics work i learned while working in the research lab um and just putting that into practice or uh, where i where i work now i won't say where but yeah where i work now <laughs> but yeah you work for 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 bruce wayne i work for bruce i work for wayne industries as wayne the industries. as their main analyst <laughs> i work for starks industries as a marine biologist <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for when for when thanos might come out of the water it might be an ocean thanos you don't know that remember in endgame or they mentioned whales <laughs> did they yeah, Cap was like, I saw whales in the Hudson. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, He's like, can you not? <laughs> can, can, can you please not? <laughs> can you please not. People died, Cap. Yeah, P Cap, come on, man. People are Cap, gone. Come on, man. Mr. 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 Boy Scout over here. Mr. People Boy. actually died. <laughs> um, but a part of me wants to feels like maybe I should have done art, but at the same time, I've had discussions with people in art school, like some of our friends, and yeah, yeah, yeah like the, especially the job market now is the i mean it's very hard. difficult it's either you're self-made or you you know even like animation jobs are extremely competitive um and yeah, i mean and especially because all these tools are available to everybody now that's right? true i mean i guess for, for, for a good reason for a good reason yeah. i i think that at least like huh, what was i gonna say like graphic design jobs are everywhere and if you're like decent and you have like very decent draftsmanship I think you can easily score a graphic design job, but at the same time, I don't think, from what I know, a lot of them don't exactly pay as well as like certain jobs, especially because you're going, if you're if you if you go to Cal Arts and you spend like, what was it fifty thousand a semester? Is Cal Arts fifty thousand um, a year? In San Francisco? I think it's in L.A. Let me double check real quick. I know there's research. an art school in SF that's like that. It's, it's, it's oh the one in S the one in SF is the San Francisco Academy of Arts. That's different. Okay, I had a friend who went there. Yeah. It's a uh, California Institute of Arts, Cal Arts. That's San it's in Santa Santa Clarita. That's in SoCal, right? It's, yeah, it's it's SoCal. In Valencia. But yeah. It sounds like SoCal. But yeah, I mean one of my friends, and I used to work with him, he graduated from the Sacramento uh Institute of Art. And now, but now he makes 13 an hour doing graphic design for the old company we used to work for. I was like, man, you deserve to get paid more. Like he's literally like you know, thirteen dollars in this economy yeah. is just chump change, $13 man. Beneath San Francisco has been on wage. Exactly. You know? I mean, he lives in he lives um like in the Central Valley, but it's like, come on, man. Even still, rent here is still hella expensive. Like, yeah, thirteen yeah. an hour is barely enough to get by. Like, what? A more so. I mean, fifteen. Like, I, I when I worked with him, I was getting paid like sixteen, but. Yeah. For him to get thirteen, even though it's only like two dollars less, that's still a significant difference. Plus, you got tax coming out of your paycheck. It's in. It's, it, it just sucks. <laughs> and you live in California, so that's all your paycheck, basically. Exactly. It's tax. California. California. Yeah. Don't come to California, guys. Not, not until you have a good career. Yeah. Um, it's hard. <laughs> just go to Texas. It's very difficult. Go to Texas. Yes. <laughs> um, Oregon. Come to Oregon. Be be, uh, be near me, because uh, you know. The cost of living in Oregon is pretty not bad, depending where you are. Where you are, is it really not that, so. not bad in Oregon? I mean, compared to California, come on. That makes sense. That's fair. <laughs> I, I lived in California for most of my life, so like seeing rent for for certain prices in Oregon that that doesn't kill you on the inside it is. Mm -hmm. huh, this does exist. <laughs> they do move in herds. They do. <laughs> rent, decent rent exists. Mason, it does exist, you know? There's something to it. I don't know what it is. But 
But yeah, it's, it's super weird to me seeing, you know, certain mounts for rent and no sales tax and all that other fun stuff. But, mm -hmm. but yeah. No, um, no sales <laughs> tax. <laughs> uh, but honestly, honestly, I do love California and I, I do miss parts of living here, right? Like, it's not a bad place to live. It's just really expensive and you know, it's only getting more expensive and there need to be more safety nets for people, right? Who want to yeah. live here and I mean, I think it was comfortably. The wealth disparity in this state is quite a lot. Telling. It's quite yeah. telling, and it's it's very unfortunate. Like I can't live in San Francisco anymore. If I lived in San Francisco, I would be living in probably like one of the like most like probably like in the Tenderloin, dude. And I hate. Like I've been to the Tenderloin, and I feel for the people who are there, who are trying to make a living. But it's just full of like so much like you know, it's a hive of scum and you. villainy. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> wretchedness wretchedness i mean there are great people in the tenderloin but it has so many problems right now especially yeah. you know like the drug issues that are going on the homeless crisis not all homeless people are bad but of course there are homeless people who don't want to improve their living situation and maybe the reason yeah. they want they can't is because you know they don't have the assistance to i don't know 100 yeah. the situation but like you know when I got robbed there, <laughs> I was pissed. You got robbed in San Francisco? Um, so I, it wasn't like a, you know, like, you know, give me your money. It was more like a, um, I'm going to sound so stupid and naive. My, Me and my brother went to a restaurant in the Tenderloin. Because, you know, Tenderloin has some of the best food in the Bay Area. I'm not going to lie. has some of the best food uh, in the Bay Area, right? Yes, that, that, that's, that's fair. <laughs> but I was like... I was going to bring my backpack with me into the restaurant. And oh, then no. my brother, and then, you know, they were like, oh, you just leaving the car. So I, <laughs> you can guess what happened next. So, yeah, it wasn't that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got yeah. you. You didn't even put it in the trunk. You put it in the, like, the front seat. Put in the trunk. Um, They broke in. We called the police. Yeah, I saw you do it. Police, yeah, yeah. police didn't help. They were, like, stupid. <laughs> Why are you stupid? You've never been here before. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> Sorry, officer. I didn't. I didn't know, man. Yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't know. I was a stupid officer. <laughs> I didn't know. I was dumb officer. <laughs> yeah, like it, it sucks. You know that that happens, right? Like, just geez. Yeah. Especially when you, you think about, like, especially when when you talked about it before making that decision to leave yeah. it in your car. I mean, hey, it's like I, fatal move. I move on. I mean, it was just it was just full of expensive textbooks. But, um, oh, wow. Okay. Well, yeah. Yes. 100%. Don't leave anything in your car in San Francisco. So like I lived in San Bruno, but I never lived in like, like closer to San Francisco. And the thing is like, mm -hmm. I did not have a lot of, like, I, I didn't have a car till I moved out of San Francisco. So I didn't have any experience. Was it your brother's car? In your car? Yeah. It was my brother's car. that got, <laughs> oh no, it's yeah. even worse because it's like, <laughs> it was your stuff it was his car <laughs> yeah it's a double whammy but yes yeah. got hit yeah so anyway yeah that's the tragic tale of my uh, uh my uh, my college text robbery yeah my robbery yeah man yeah but back to your point about like you know not regretting not being able to do the things you want to do like you're still young you know still relatively young you got time if you really want to you got time to do all the things you would like don't don't let certain things stop you but sometimes it's we always think what what if yeah you know? what, what if i like, became a pop star what if what if we are pop stars okay did i tell you the <laughs> this is a funny story oh, no. did i tell you the story of when i almost became a pop star in the philippines okay uh go on i, I want to see how this ends all right so i can so i can sing i don't sing a lot but i can i can sing like are you can sing i can vouch for you yes yeah so Freaking! <laughs> there was a audition at the at the um, music school that I was at. Like my I, I, my mother enrolled me in, uh -huh. and it was for joining. Like it was for ABS CBN or something like that. Oh you know, gosh. you know, or GMA, okay. like one of those, like you know, like talk shows, right? And basically, what happened was, I, so I auditioned and. You know, I was like, okay, whatever. I thought it was going to be, like, a solo deal. And I could just, like, I'd be able to become an, in an indie, like, you know, like, sweet boy who could play guitar on, like, on stage for a living. And it turns out it was for a boy band. I didn't know that when I when I auditioned. And then finally they are like, okay, uh, we want you to join the boy band. Can you make it to practice in Quezon City? Uh, let's see. Uh, next week. 
I'm like, wait, what? And you're like, boy band. I'm not a sellout. <laughs> that was literally what I said. BTS I'm... flashes in your head. <laughs> I say, oh, and do this. Did you just mix Korean and Japanese? Yes, it's, it's a <laughs> Koreanese. Koreanese. Uh, Nihon Gozai Ni Chinese. Koreanese in the house, yes. My but, favorite anime. But, um, so yeah, that, that's that's what happened. And. Dang. Yeah, so imagine there's a, there's an alternate timeline where I accepted it, and you you probably wouldn't know me, but your parents would. <laughs> you see me the, on this alternate universe. I'm on TFC. I saw you're on TFC, and I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> the full, full, full. <laughs> like, hello, uh, nice to see you guys. You're my biggest fans over there. There, yeah. <laughs> see, up like a panty get thrown at me from the. <laughs> Stupid. Well, yeah, I don't know. It's for, like... the, for the for the initiated, TFC is the Filipino channel. Yes, it's a uh, where they speak, um, for, like you know, Tagalog and twenty four seven, and you know, if you're That's Filipino, funny. your your grandma, your grandma is the one who's always watching it. It's always playing when you go to grandma's house. Uh, of course. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, did you eat yet? And then you know, like they'll be playing in the background. But yeah. I mean, like you know, you want you want grandma to be celebrating your victories, right? There you know, <laughs> it's not a bad thing. Yeah, I don't know. That was just an interesting part of my life when I okay at that time I thought my dream was to become a musician. Okay. Now I just want to draw dinosaurs and nice. make. Now make I just want to draw dinosaurs. Exactly. Yeah, but I mean, okay. So, like, do you want to talk about your book? Yeah, I mean, we we can chat about Menagerie real quick. So, um, what is the Menagerie? Uh, I'm so sorry. I, I'm writing a book. Uh, called the, the menagerie it's a kind of a spiritual uh successor isn't the word but like spiritual um i don't even know how to describe it but like it, it, it's in the same genre as like jurassic park prehistoric kingdom and uh, prehistoric uh, park and all that other fun stuff it like combines what i think is the best parts of all those franchises into like a unique new uh, kind of setting that focuses on like the relationships between humans and animals with dinosaurs as a proxy mm -hmm. for them. So there's things like, you know, animal trafficking and uh, research with animals and things like that with, with a bunch of dinosaurs being the, the backdrop for this. And the, so that's the main gist of it. And the, the menagerie itself is a setting where people have uh, captured some of these dinosaurs that are on an island and then they study them there. So you get the, the scenes like in prehistoric park, well, they talk about you know like why is this thing sick why um you know is, is it why is it hurting itself why you know well, answering these kinds of cool questions speculative questions like that and then there's a bit of there's a lot of the island that's not secured by people yet mm -hmm. so there's like a wilderness out there that's like not safe so it's a little like a, a little bit like a terra nova or attack on titan where you don't go outside the walls or else <laughs> Menagerie. So anyway, yeah. So I, I have a, a a lot of it written. I just has to I have to put it in order and edit it and stuff. But um, yeah, chapters one through three will be available for free um, around August or September this year nice. on my website. Be able to read. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about releasing the prologue. We'll be able to read sooner than that, but. Um, I don't know how the rest of it will be distributed. Uh, people were telling me I should, you know, self-publish on Amazon. I'm like, ah, eh, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> so yeah, we'll I don't. The rest of it comes don't. Out. Let's see if you can. I'd I'd say you should pitch it to a I don't know, man. to a publisher. We'll just we'll I would do that first before you even think of self-publishing, just to see if there is an interest for it. Because I think, um, compared to like just self-publishing on Amazon Kindle, I think there is actually. At least for di in terms of like for dinosaur fiction, I think there is a big audience for people, you know, who want that Jurassic Park feeling with the accuracy of modern paleo art. And I don't think there is anything yeah, like that yeah. besides Prehistoric Kingdom, which is Primitive a video War. Game. Primitive War is a. Have you heard of Primitive War before? Yes, and they have. I've actually yes. talked to them on Instagram. I'm very excited to see their the comic that comes out. I have not read the book. Have you? Not yet. I've been meaning to. It's like on my list because there's very again. You said it. There's very few. Um, yeah, entries into this genre besides mm -hmm. like like in literature right there are very few entries in this genre besides jurassic park and the lost world right 
even the original, you know, like the, the Lost World by Conan Doyle, right? Or Journey to the Center of the Earth. Mm -hmm. Those are the only remarkable entries into this. Uh, Primitive, Primitive War, you know, it, it's creeping up on there in cult following, but hasn't gotten quite the momentum that, you know, mm -hmm. it could. So not everyone knows about this, like, and that's a shame because from what I've seen and heard, it's, it's a brilliant, you know, and really cool and unique spin on this kind of stuff so that's kind of what i want to contribute to is like another you know amateur isn't the isn't the right word but like to, to show people that there, there's more possibilities than jurassic park or jurassic world um to what we could do with these subjects and, and to show them in a different light like you said like more accurate or at least you know um different because uh I was listening to a podcast recently, I forgot which one, but they were talking about how the Jurassic animals, Jurassic World animals, Jurassic Park animals, are the stock versions now. Mm -hmm. Anyone who wants to make a dinosaur thing, media, will use the Jurassic animals more often than not than, you know, looking at the fossil record and making up their own designs. The people who made Jurassic Park looked at the fossil record first and then went from there to embellish. Exactly. That's why they're so good, right? But no one else wants to try to do that effort anymore. And I feel like there, there's a, a gap in that. So not even my work, but I hope more people in the future will, will do this and, and see that it's possible to do, you know, different animals or, or like at least original animals. You don't need to be constrained by what, you know, the media tells you is popular, mm -hmm. right? Because it, it's like kind of a, it's a vicious cycle, but they tell you it's popular. So you think it's popular. And so you keep doing, you keep pushing out. Mm. those animals and no one wants to take a risk that's true but something different closest i think we got was like primeval maybe to like a visual media that like connected with people in a certain mm. way that didn't they had some jurassic parkian looking dinosaurs to be sure but like they tried to be different mm. with at least a few of their species and that, that's worth lauding them for right because because you don't get that um, I hope someday we can get really cool things that are new and fresh and we can have the Jurassic dinosaurs and, you know, accurate or more accurate animals existing in the same space, right? It's mm -hmm. not going to be one or the other or one dominates over the other. We, we get people who are making creative things again. I want I want that to happen. And so uh, with this book, I hope this this uh, inspires people to take a stab at making their own projects come true it's it's been five years in the making <laughs> this, this this 65 million no. years in the making <laughs> no no andrew just five <laughs> just five no my friend it's uh just just uh one two three four five oh actually at this point six i don't like that <laughs> it's been six years since i started and like it had massive rewrites and all that i mean it takes time to make a good story look how long george R. R. martin's been working on the winds of winter <laughs> I, I, my, my friend i don't think that's gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> it'll come uh, you know, out when it's out okay it'll come out when it's out man you know we, we, have, we must still have faith in our, our martin <laughs> we must have faith in george <laughs> and george gila george george gila <laughs> george georgia george rr -R. i want to pay george, ken I, I really want to pay ken watanabe to say that about george rr -R. martin is he on cameo? You should look and see if he's on cameo. He is Ken, really funny. Ken Watanabe, please. I just need you to make this meme about George R. R. Martin a reality. Uh, who? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm sure he knows about Game of Thrones. I, I'm, I'm sure he knows who he is, yeah. Popular man. <laughs> sure. right, let me let's check out what you're working on on the, the main Twitch. I'm working on Torvasaurus right now. Go turn up to your screen. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Ooh, look at you. Is yeah, this uh, what I got. your main design for Torbosaurus? What's up? Or is it for the pin? It's for the, it's for the pin? It's for the future pin set. Shh. Oh, the future pin. We're not supposed to talk about it. I see. Hush, it's hush, it's hush, hush right I, now. I understand. I understand. I <laughs> understand this. But, um... Yeah, no, I mean, that's really cool that you, like... Like, is the main reason you made this... Is you made the menagerie? Is it because you were like so like man? I hate Jurassic World. <laughs> I hate Jurassic World. Like my own way, Jurassic I, World. I think when we talk, when we chat about it, we being our friends and I, I do a weird job of like bouncing back between like defending the franchise and like bashing it because it's like there's some things I really like about it and other things it's just eh, because I like 
the, the main problem is that people can't separate it from what dinosaurs really are, mm -hmm. you know, because of a myriad of reasons. But, you know, people think animal, the dinosaurs look that way or prehistoric animals look that way because they saw it in the movies. Mm. But I can do the disconnect because, you know, I'm involved like this. But not everyone can care about every, anything, you know, everything all the time. So I understand that. Mm -hmm. Right. So it, it was really born of me wanting to contribute to like, hey, we have this, but think about this. Right. Mm -hmm. Think about thinking about these creatures in this way. Um, the, my, biggest, my biggest influence has to be both Prehistoric Park again and the Lost World Jurassic Park, the movie. Mm -hmm. But how you treat your subject matter, right? There, there are still forces of nature that are awesome and scary and uh, can really ruin your day if you let them. But they're still just animals they're just doing their thing to to get by and sometimes people get in the way of that but what they the they being the animals mm -hmm. are, are trying to do to get by you know um so the, the the main objective is not to bash on what was made before but to contribute to a hopeful future of you know an alternative mm -hmm. alternative way of thinking about these things um will it succeed i don't know <laughs> um oh also this i will say was inspired a lot by how dumb people are <laughs> in uh in real life not jurassic oh and really, <laughs> also not just jurassic but like all these like monster action adventure movies um mm -hmm. in recent times if you look at things like uh alien or whatever things the people yeah. in those movies are smart i mean to they're be confident. fair they're all set well i guess other movies have scientists too, but they're really dumb. Never mind, I take it back. I'll like, say yeah. it's because they're scientists, like, Charles. Come on. Oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make smart people, competent people, right? Characters right. Who, who are here on this privileged place, let's be honest, for a reason, mm -hmm. right? It, it's like NASA doesn't hire stupid people to do, to, to build rockets and stuff. Why would, you know, in Jurassic, let's say, let's just say Jurassic World because it's an easy target. Why would people in why would you hire people in Jurassic World to to do certain jobs and they they aren't good at the job, right? Or or they're doing things like genetic, like like, like uh, unfiltered genetic testing. Because <laughs> yeah, don't, like, don't you think it would be funny? It'd be <laughs> great. It'd be cool. But yeah, but like these people aren't competent. These people aren't doing things that people would do in real life. What is what happens when you put competent people? In a situation like this where everything goes you know everything goes on its back right because the dinosaurs will get out in the book you know like there will be chaos there will be you know people getting eaten and stuff but how do you react to that when you're a trained field officer right or a conservation officer who mm -hmm. has gone through months or years of training you panic and then you say game over man yeah game over man it's game, game over, over man we're all gonna die man <laughs> For me, uh, Alien was the biggest influence for how I'm going to treat these characters. As opposed to um, ali Aliens? As, well, as opposed to Aliens. I, or, love, I love Aliens, <laughs> to be fair, though. Or uh, Covenant. Oh, God, Alien Co what, Prometheus is, is the worst defender of the entire franchise when the scientists take off their helmets. Oh, in, a, in the in Alien Sandy. world? And then they get like the taken, alien, you know, yeah. the Alien Spore... Whatever yeah. it gets in the, the girl. Because Prometheus is the prequel to Alien, right? Yeah. Yeah, so none of that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, regrettably, none of that will happen. I, I want smart people to be back in the book because it's more interesting that way, right? Because you, you, well, you the want prob people to root for. Yeah. it's. I guess I understand like giving people flaws, but when you make people who are supposed to be like intelligent, top of their field people, like really dumb. Yeah. I mean, that's how I felt about... You, you lead me to believe people in the Alien Covenant movie like got to be major biologists for like space exploration and then pull stuff like that. Exactly. That's like a common sense thing. Like even If, the, if thing. the audience has a qu like, questions that, like, don't you think like, you know, it's, just, it's stuff like that. I'm just like, man, you know, the audience would yeah, question I that. Think, I, th I think audiences are ready to, to be treated as smart. Yes, I agree. 100%. You know, I think Game of, Game of Thrones proved that to me. Because mm -hmm. aliens are ready to like not be treated like they're dumb, mm -hmm. right? They're, they're ready for long, sprawling narratives. I don't know, man. Justice League taught me the opposite. I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I just love like crack. Zach, Zach Snyder, if you're watching this, um, I, we are just joking. I know. I, I I just love pooping on the Snyder cut just because it's like it's it's because the meme potential of the Snyder cut. If you, if you ever need a Black Adam, um, I'm your man or a uh, Superboy, Crypto. Zach, please. I want to be. I want to be um, Ace the Bat Hound, please. Right, can I be the next Robin, Zach? Zach. <laughs> <laughs> <It's Robin. laughs> Zach, if you, if you need a green arrow, man, I got you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. Like, we're, we're right behind your vision. Right behind if you need. <laughs> I I believe in the vision of Zack Snyder, man. I believe. I love I love one division. <laughs> <laughs> man. Right, speaking of you know, um, Justice League, what would you consider? What would you consider the Snyder <laughs> cut of dinosaur like media? The Snyder cut of Dinosaur Media. I, I said this in our other chats, but I, I'm honest, any Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom extended version is the Snyder there, there, cut. Is the Snyder cut of Jurassic of, of, of uh, the Dinosaur franchise? No dinosaur franchises, dude, because it, it exists. Release it's out there. Release the Trevorrow cut. <laughs> release the Triassic cut. Release the Triassic cut. <sighs> where, where no one but where the, the dinosaurs talk, but the humans don't. Oh my god, that would be so dumb. Okay, here I would watch that. Okay, imagine this. Colin Trevorrow's Land Before Time reboot. How would that go? Oh, Littlefoot would say the F word. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Littlefoot would, would demean Sarah for being a woman. <laughs> Rightfully. No, 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 no. Sarah just, and just Dougie. Kidding. Kidding. <laughs> He's kidding. It's a joke. For legal reasons, it's a joke. For, for legal reasons, it's a joke. I am joking. <laughs> I kid, I kid, my man. No, Petrie would have like a generic. I don't know. I feel like Petrie would be like a minority, like a minority, oh. like a stereotype. Oh no, you're right though. Like, I no, I, I think okay, okay, okay. I, we'll give Trevorrow uh, grief, but I, I think he's he's not one of the bad guys, you know, in like media. Like, I don't think so. For for like the okay for for women. It's weird, but for minority stereotypes, I think he's done a good job at not doing that. like like Michael Bay in the second Transformers movie. Yeah, with the think about with that, the two racist bad, Transformers. That's a that's oh a bad time. Right there, that was but. so bad. Oh my goodness! But yeah, yeah, we'll I give him grief for everything else. But that I don't know, man. He, he seems I'm not gonna call him an ally, but he's he's not that much of a scumbag. I think. I, okay, yeah, I, I'll have to agree then. Yeah, he's not also a, Colin Trevorrow. If you're listening to this, uh, Jurassic World Seven. If you need, you know, if you need a marine biologist, yeah, if you need to, to play a marine biologist, to, yeah, yeah. If you if you want someone to like evaluate how your mosasaur survives for so long, you know, I'm I'm your man. Yeah. If you want more marine reptiles, they're I not gonna suggestion. Uh, Charles, they're not gonna hire you. You know why? Because he doesn't listen to scientists. <laughs> I'm pretty. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. Burn. But um, yeah, I got. I do want to finish this at some point. I, I I started working on it with the intention of yeah, I'll finish. I'll, I'll see how far I get tonight. But now I I genuinely want to like see this through to completion. Mm -hmm. Right now uh -oh. I'm, I'm working on Brontosaurus. Now it's gonna be fun. Let's see, I'll check it out. I I literally just started, so I'm not done yet. I didn't even like lay it out all the way. I'm just trying to figure out how to make it like you know chibi kawaii. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I mean, okay, I'm gonna lay out my grief for Jurassic World and that, like, I enjoyed it in 2015, but, like, Fallen Kingdom, Fallen Kingdom just felt like doo doo caca to me, dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I have such a potty mouth tonight, but I just, it just wasn't a good movie, you know? Like, you know, it's not a good movie. Things it's didn't make sense. I felt like I was watching a Transformers movie. You know, like, the characters. There were some parts with, like, Blue running through the lab and jumping through the explosion. Yeah. Oh no, not even that part. The part where the, the lava. she's fighting the Indoraptor, and 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 then they fall through the ceiling. Mm -hmm. That part, and then she poses for the camera. I'm like, really? <laughs> I just felt like it treated the audience like like they were dumb. Like they were dumb, right? Like um, like, like oh my god, we gotta we gotta give them a you know a a, a callback to the, the the first trilogy. You know why? Because because. Yes. Because we can. 
<laughs> like like the when whenever Rex like you know the Tyrannosaur roars, Tyrannosaurus roars, it's just like please stop it. Huh. Please cease. I, I like the opening and that's about it. Yeah, the opening of Fallen Kingdom had me for a second. I was like He's gonna be Has great. the first half, not gonna lie. <laughs> they, 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 I was like, it's gonna be so good. It's gonna be such a great movie. Oh my god, this is gonna this is gonna revolutionize dinosaur cinema. <laughs> Two hours <laughs> later. What was that? Oh god, <laughs> what the hell was that? Two hours later. <laughs> like, I, I don't know what that was. Do you know what that was? I don't know what that was. <laughs> it was like, what was this? This was that was crap. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was talking to Avery not too long about Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, and I was like, you know, if they started the, the the sequel trilogy with Fallen Kingdom, not really like a Fallen Kingdom story, right? Mm -hmm. Where let's say they had to save, where they got to move all the animals off Isla Sorna, because it's going to explode, mm -hmm. right? And we'll establish that New Blar's dinosaurs are all, let, let's just say there was no Jurassic World, okay. right? Say so New Blar's dinosaurs are all dead. You, you go to Sorna, you got to save all those dinosaurs. They're the last ones alive. Mm -hmm. You do that. And then the trilogy is about Jurassic World, a world with dinosaurs in it, because it starts the entire trilogy off with, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look what we did. Uh oh, hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Charles, hear me out. I think they're more compelling. I have an go idea. Ahead, Jurassic right. World okay. of, of Warcraft. All right, keep going. All right, all right. So, new franchise idea, okay? This okay, this was okay. this is my my fan theory for Jurassic World Seven, all right. So what's gonna happen? Um, in order to keep the franchise fresh, all right. Um, you know, uh -huh. so uh -huh. Owen Owen and Bryce Dallas Howard are mm -hmm. you know they whatever they're like doing they they yeah, broke baby. they broke no no no, no yeah. they broke up again. I'm sure they're gonna break up again. They're, they're broken ahead. up again for the nth time, and then all of a sudden okay. you know they're on the Sanctuary Island where they now keep all the dinosaurs, and then all of a sudden. <gasps> A portal opens up, and the dinosaurs start running into the portal, and then they're in the world of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. and, and then Owen okay, will Owen will ride the Tyrannosaur into battle while he fights, you know, the Lich King and all that stuff. And then will he say the F word? Yes, uh, the dinosaurs say the F word. Mm -hmm. In in this version, I guess it's an F in Jurassic World. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Copyright infringement. Or Jurassic Star Wars. I don't know. I'm oh, right. okay. Like, where could, where could this franchise go? I don't know where this franchise could go anymore post, like, the, you know, like, the next Well, I, I, th I think they actually have a good case for, like, all continuing, because there's dinosaurs everywhere now. I don't know. That's true. It's pretty like, true. Where do you go? I mean, anywhere. I think that's the coolest bit about, like, that's why I wanted it to start with them all being... Like pulled off the islands in like the first hypothetical movie, right? And mm -hmm. like take them all off the island, right? So we start the entire trilogy with them off the island, then you maybe the second movie will be about how do you deal with them. Mm -hmm. Third movie is about, you know, how do we co like whatever it's like a cliffhanger in the second movie. Like, oh no, the evil corporation's gonna kill them all or something. I'm like, okay, how do you deal with that in the third movie? Mm -hmm. You know, like they lose the second in the second movie they lose. Rexy gets killed. I don't know. Oh no! You can't kill Rexy. She's like the the you know the fanboys will get mad again. She's just the main character. I know. It's crazy. Essentially, she, but, I mean, in a way, she kind of is. Huh, I'm okay with it. <laughs> well, I'm cool with it. <laughs> so, so then, what happens? Uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't think I'd get this far. <laughs> I didn't think this <laughs> franchise would get this far. I, I didn't <sighs> really think about it until now. Huh. I think what I want more than anything too is a good Jurassic World game. I was gonna give you like an example of one, and I don't have one. Like the yeah. mobile, the mobile Which game. Which ones have you played? Okay, I played the mo okay Jurassic World. Jurassic Park had has like a lot of good games, so that gets a pass. Right, that's mm. easy. That's an easy pass. Um, but like, I'm trying to think. Jurassic World, I have played all the mobile games. Mm. So that includes um yeah, like the first the Alive, I used I used to be a hardcore Alive player until I realized that like it was basically a gotcha game. Um I at least play Alive a lot. And yeah. I kinda missed the time when I, I played it so much because um I don't know, a lot of good memories of running out there. Oh, there's an Ankylosaurus. Exactly. It felt like playing 
Pokemon Go for the first time a little bit. Yeah. Again, it didn't quite get to that level of. Well, because you're you're probably the only one playing the game. In, in the thing on campus, right? No, Amy exactly. played it with me. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> she made me happy. <laughs> but like, what do you call this? What else? Jurassic World. Alive. I played the Jurassic World mobile game, and I, I ended up just cheating and buying all the cash because it was just, it was literally just one of those like wait and make a park kind of games. Oh yeah, I, I never got that one. I got Jurassic Park Builder or it was a Jurassic Park the game, whatever it's called. Um, I cheated in that one too. The, the first mobile, the first mobile game. I like that one a little bit. But, my, um... my jailbroken iPhone, man. <laughs> I downloaded the the, the APK. <laughs> Good times. I miss. Can you jailbreak an iPhone now? Uh, like, like, I haven't heard much about from that community. Like, my old iPhones used to be jailbroken, but like, I don't do that anymore because they added so many features that I wanted. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like from jailbreaking. You gotta jailbreak it anyway. Go like, it anyway. Um, I think you can, but I don't think the community is as big anymore. As far as, as yeah, because they they they, they f fixed most of them. Well, for me, I, I jailbroke my iPhone because I got tired of the volume thing being up front. Mm. You know, like it used to like overlay all your stuff. Mm -hmm. you remember that yes yes you these right like, like it used to be on it used to be like a big obnoxious rectangle mm -hmm. with the volume indicator right but then they changed it such as it's on the side that's why i drove up my phone to begin with was to move it to the side mm -hmm. and so like oh well that that's fixed and like music well spotify i don't know. I just pay for that because it's legal i guess mm -hmm. um i don't really play games on my phone so no, no e purpose like over time, I was like, "Oh, I don't need this <laughs> anymore." I don't need this anymore. It's it's over. I, I'm, I'm I'm free. Is this what it's like to be to be free from <laughs> to be shackles? Free from the shackles of Apple? I'm, no, free from the shackles of, of of the players. Of the players. Uh, I guess. I, I, I'm back in the shackles of Apple, Andy. I'm on a I'm on a MacBook. <laughs> that's that's very true. I've never owned a uh, an Android. Have you? Um, when I was in in high school, I had a Sony Xperia Play, and I mean, it was I loved I loved that phone. I figured out how to download all these apps on it, and then I used mm. it to play Game Boy Advance games at school. Mm. So I'd be like during lunchtime, I'd be hanging with my friends in the middle in the middle of that. I'd be like playing like Pokemon Red at like. 500 percent speed so i could like just grind levels really quick <laughs> mm -hmm. you know those are the good memories i have with android but i don't i haven't had much experience since then mm -hmm. i mean i have a i have a google pixel but it i don't think it runs on the same kind of android as like main like like the samsung phones do oh you currently have a pixel no, no, I have a. I'm using a iPhone XR right now, but I had a Pixel. Oh, okay. Oh, like my friend gave me his old Pixel, and I was planning to move my SIM over to that one, but I ended up just getting an iPhone XR. Mm -hmm. The main thing is because like the the screen is cracked on the Google. Oh, and you're like ah, I'm not gonna deal with that. Exactly. It's a good phone though. But um, other than that, like I don't know. Do you have any opinions on on Android in general, or just you like the customizability? Oh, like, like, I, I like the fact that you know it exists and it's a com competitor to Apple. You know, I think competition's good, right? Mm -hmm. For definitely innovation, definitely. right? But uh, yeah, I have no hard feelings for either way. Like I don't, the only only reason why I have an iPhone, right, mm -hmm. is because I've had one for so long and I have a MacBook now. So it's like I like the ecosystem aspect of it, like keeping it all in the same like together. Mm -hmm. It's so, it's so convenient, like. For making social media posts if i'm honest exactly because uh you can just airdrop you know your stuff mm -hmm. right and and there's a lot of interactivity you can answer phone calls on your computer you can message from your computer with all third-party app mm -hmm. right like that that consolidation is very nice from a a, a workflow sense because again limited hours in my day mm -hmm. so I, I like making sure everything's efficient and moving quickly so i feel like a shill <laughs> I feel like I just plugged Apple right now. Like they are, they are not sponsoring me. Sadly. Guys, support Apple, man. Support App Apple. Apple's such a great company, isn't it, Charles? <laughs> uh, 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 blink twice, Andrew. Can you tell? Oh, like, <laughs> like, let me just check my bank account real quick. Ooh. Yeah, Apple's great. Ooh. Guys. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Oh, what time is it? Anyway, guys. Oh, the whole stimulus. Um, time is uh, pretty much um up. So. I'd like to thank you, Mr. Paint Paddock, Mr. Mr. Nye, Mr. Charles Nye, 
for um, joining Mr. Paddock. me. <laughs> it's, it's Mr. Paddock. <laughs> Mr. Paddock. Um, Mr. Paint Paddock. Mr. Paint. Yes. yes. <laughs> Mr. Paint. Thank you for joining Mr. my Paint. stream. Um, how can people yeah. uh, reach out to you? Yeah, people can reach out to me. Uh, my, my tag is is the same across all social media, which is at the Paint Paddock. Like, feel free to message me about really anything you want, and I'll, I'll do my best to make sure I get to you. Um, yeah, like uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I, I, I mostly use Twitter and Instagram, so if you want to see me there or, you know, just chat about things, I'll, I'll be there. And maybe this Diplodocus will make its way onto the account at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, thanks for having me, Andy. And I'm, yeah, of course. I had yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, to see who you have on next. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you know who's on next? I honestly don't know yet. We shall see. No? Um, I might make this like All a, right. I might make this like kind of podcasty thing, like maybe every Sunday, and then um, my other stuff will be throughout the week. So, yeah, we'll okay. see. Let me message cool. a few people, and we'll see who will appear on next. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. We're gonna bounce now. Take care, everyone. Right. Um, bye. Uh, bye an Barack iPhone. Obama. Next bye. week. Bye an iPhone. Barack Obama next week. All right. Good night, guys. Thank you for everyone Bye for guys. joining the stream.